Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel today. So yes, you read the title right. You can run the latest version of Chrome on Windows 7. So how is this possible? So I actually do not know how this is possible because the uh, author of this project has not l listed how we got this up and running. But if I had to say this could be ran with a Wine API, like how you would on Linux, like say for example, if you wanted to get something like, 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 if you wanted to get like, if, God, if you wanted to get Office 2010 up, up and running, you would use Wine. If you wanted to use other programs that did not work natively, you would have to use Wine. I feel like the same thing could apply here, but I feel like it's more probable that they probably just viewed the code because here's the thing with Chrome, it's open source. Anyone can view, modify, and make their own browser. That's how we get web browsers like Brave, Edge, Opera GX. That's how all those web browsers are made. They are based off the same API. So basically what they do is they just steal the API and they add their own things. So that's exactly how, how Opera is made. That's how Edge is made. They're all running the same exact API. And that API is open source. So what I feel like they did is they just took the API and they made it to where it can run on Windows 7 APIs. Because the APIs from OS is like 10, 11, all the way down to 8.1, 7. All of those operating, system have, operating systems have their own unique APIs. So they probably just, they probably just modified the code to where it could run on the API for older operating systems. Now keep in mind, this doesn't just work on Windows 7. It works on Windows Vista with the extended kernel and it works on Windows 8.1. So this is a web browser you can use across all three of, of those operating systems. And here's something I also do like about it, is it is completely free from Chrome's bullshit. So which means is that by default, there is not anything about Chrome running in the background. It might look like it, but this is completely free from Chrome. Now, keep in mind, if, if you do things like, like Google search, it will send stuff back to Chrome, but it, it's not nearly as much as if you just were to install the regular version of Chromium. So what can and can't this web browser do? I'm going to keep it a stack. I have been trying to benchmark this thing for like the last hour. I can't find anything wrong with it. I have gone to Reddit, Twitter, all those things. I watch, I watch this, that's not legal, but I watch all my stuff that I need to, and I have not found any problems. I use LibreWolf as my main web browser because it is, it is based off Firefox, and it is still in support. So Firefox is going to be ending support pretty soon, within the, within the next year. Firefox 115 is the last version to run on Windows 7. So yeah, there's that. But I feel like it's going to be the exact same thing. Firefox is also open source. So I guarantee you there's going to be someone out there who makes a Firefox fork for Windows 7. So let's say we try to go to YouTube. We can see it runs perfectly fine. If we try to watch Linus Tech Tips, God, please don't copy. I told you this would be horror. Water cooling using... God, I have to watch that later. That sounds very intriguing. Can't wait to see how that goes. But as we can see, Chrome extensions work perfectly fine. Everything works great on this web browser. It's like if you were using Chrome on Windows 10 or 11. So if we head on over to what is my browser, we can see that it says we are running Chrome on, on Windows 10. So as we can see, JavaScript work, JavaScript works, Cookies work, third party works. It's gonna show it's gonna show my IP address, so let me just scroll past that. It even gives you your location, internet speed, borderline window size. It gives you a lot of stuff. So this is the latest version of Chrome up and running. Here's one thing I was find cool about this is I feel like this would easily help a lot of issues with older operating systems. And, and one of those things is lack of, of software support. If we head on over to Element, basically what Element is, is it is a 
Matrix clients. I don't want Elemental. I don't want that crappy movie. Element. E-L-E-M-E. -E element. Matrix. So basically, it's a Matrix client. Now, if you don't know what Matrix is, it's like it's like Discord, but for privacy. And here's the thing with with Matrix is that it can be used across a lot of other clients. There's like 30 clients you can use for uh, Matrix, all about personal preference. So let me show you guys. If we try to download Element right now, God, I can't type today. I just woke up. Yes, it's noon. So why did I? We were on the download page. I am retarded. Okay, let's just head back to here. Element app. So if we try to download Element right now, if, if I, can I do that, please? Oh my God, I don't want contact. Okay, I wonder if I just have an Element download. Oh my God, I cannot type today. How did I get a zero in there and and not a? Oh Jesus. All right, so if we try to download this for the latest version, it's gonna take 46 seconds. I'll be right back. All right, and we are back. So if we try to run Element right now, let's see what happens. So it's taking it a little while. So it's either just gonna A, not run, or it's just gonna give us a kernel 32 error. So let's see what happens. Yep, run. So it's loading it right now. Yep, as we can see, the product entry point discard virtual memory cannot be loaded in the dynamic link library kernel 32. So as I was, as I said, it does not work properly. So it just spins there, spins there, spins there, bada bada. So if we head on over to Supermium, you guys need to understand that a lot of these things are based off Chrome. So the reason why this can't run with the app version is because it is you it is running either Chrome version 114 or one or it's it's running I don't know the exact version, but it's running a older version of Chrome that does not work on Windows 7. So if we try downloading the web app, so I'm gonna have to log in real quick. So sign in, open Element Web. If we head on over to Element Web we can see we have a install button right here. So we can install Element. As you can see, we have Element running on the latest version of Chromium. So basically what this does is it allows you to have your own web app for it. So you don't need to install the actual app anymore. The same thing can be said with things like Zoom and Discord. We are not gonna have to rely on the actual apps since we have this version of of Chromium. So not only does this give you a up and running web browser, but it also fixes a lot of compatibility issues. I would honestly go as far as saying this fixes 80 to 90% of compatibility issues. Now keep in mind, if you use your OS for things like me, I play, a, a, I play my fair share of games, so this isn't gonna fix the issue with, 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 uh, with things like Epic and, and Steam ending support because those are things you can't just necessarily just download because I don't know why but this allows you to run a lot of things that you would not be able to run so as you can see I have element working perfectly fine and as we can see right here it has the Windows 10 borders because this was designed to run on 10 and 11 so I hope you guys enjoyed this video I hope you guys found the information in this video useful and I don't know if I did before, but I have to give credit to whoever made this. The person who made this project goes by the name Win32. If, and if you guys aren't familiar with the, the technology industry, he is the person that made the Windows Vista Ig, Ig extended kernel. So he's also making his own web browser. I, I, I will leave the link in the description below if you guys want to download this. But I will see you guys in the next video.